Hi, I'm Susan. I'm here at the Ogden Nature Center, and we're going to talk about birds. Think of a bird that you know. What does it look like? What does it have on its body? Now look at me. Do I look like a bird? How am I different from a bird? Think about it for a second. See if you can come up with something. Okay, I'm going to give you a couple of hints. One reason I'm not a bird is I don't have feathers. Birds' bodies are covered with feathers, and birds are the only animals on the whole planet that have feathers. But what's interesting about a bird's feathers is even on the same bird, not all the feathers are the same. They have something called a downy feather. These are the fluffy, warm feathers, and they're the very first feathers a bird gets. If you've ever seen a fluffy chick, this is the kind of feather that they're covered with. They never really get rid of these downy feathers. These downy feathers stay close to the bird's body its whole life until it gets older, and it actually helps keep them warm. Now, as they get older, they get more feathers on top of these downy feathers. Some feathers that they get on top are called contour feathers. Contour means it follows the contours or the lines of the bird's body. And these are the ones that the birds have all over their chests and their, their bellies and their sides and their backs, and they're called contour feathers. And they actually help keep the bird dry, in addition to the downy feathers keeping them warm. It's like wearing a really warm winter coat. If it gets really hot in the summer, they can fluff these out and air circulates between the feathers and it keeps them really cool. So these are a really good way for a bird to insulate and to keep itself cool. The next kind of feather a bird might have, because most birds, not all birds, but most birds fly, is a wing feather. And wing feathers, you can see, aren't straight, they're curved. And this curve helps the air lift up underneath the bird's wings and helps it fly off into the air. So a, a wing feather is a curved, stiff feather. Now the last feather you might think about are a bird's tail feathers. And tail feathers can look in all different kinds of ways. Some tail feathers are stiff like this one from a red-tailed hawk. Some are a fluffy, what we call plume, like this one from an emu. Some have really pretty colors on them, like this one from a peacock. And tail feathers have a couple of different jobs. First thing tail feathers do is help the birds steer. It's really hard to fly in a straight line or to curve to the side and avoid hitting a tree if you don't have a tail feather that kind of acts like a rudder, just like it does on an airplane. Now, this tail feather is a very special one from our, our boy peacock. And you can see that this has really bright, beautiful colors. And then in the middle of the top of the, of the bird's um, feather is this spot that looks like an eye. This is what we call an eye spot. And when a peacock flares out his tail, these spots all of a sudden look like many, many, many eyes looking at you. And if you are a predator and you thought, I'm going to eat that bird, all of a sudden he spreads his tail, he fluffs out his chest, and the predator looks at it and goes, hey, those are eyes looking back at me. Those are other predators, and I have no idea how many there are. Maybe I'll just go over here and eat this rabbit instead. So that is what they do. Now, you'll also notice on a peacock, he has all these bright, beautiful colors. And he better have eye spots to keep a predator away, because he's not going to hide from anyone with all that bright blue and green. Why do you think, in the bird world, the boy birds are the ones that have all the bright, beautiful colors? Why do you think that is? If you said it's because mama birds have to hide and they have to camouflage, which means blend in with their surroundings, you'd be right. In the bird world, the boy birds are the ones that have to strut around and be handsome, and the girl birds are the ones who have to sit on the nest and keep the baby safe and the eggs safe. So another reason I'm not a bird, besides the fact that I don't have any feathers, is that I don't lay eggs, no matter how hard I try. I can't lay an egg. So I'm going to show you a bird egg. This is a wild bird egg, and it looks different than chicken eggs. Chicken eggs are lots of pretty colors. We see them in the store. But bird eggs are designed differently. First of all, a mama bird has to lay eggs, otherwise she would be too heavy if she had babies growing inside of her, like a dog or a cat does with puppies and kittens. She has to actually lay that egg outside of her body and sit on it so that she can still remain lightweight enough to fly. So while she's sitting on these eggs, sometimes she might step off of them to eat for a little bit. Can you understand or think about a way, why would her egg look like its nest material? Why would it blend in like that? 
you'd be right if you said to camouflage. Wild bird eggs are all designed to camouflage, and they're all different colors for different reasons. If you've ever seen a robin's egg, you know that it's blue. And robin eggs might not seem like a blue egg blends in against a dark background, but the birds that eat robin eggs are birds that are flying overhead. So when a bird looks down into a tree and sees light blue sky filtering through the branches, that blue robin's egg just looks like more blue sky and it helps it hide. So I don't have feathers, I don't lay eggs, and I don't have the thing and build the thing that eggs sit in. And that's a nest. Birds build nests. Now this is a type of nest called a cup nest. It's probably a smaller, um, this looks almost like a really small what's left over of a robin's nest. There would be more material around the outside. But you can see the robin makes it with a lot of mud and grass and puts its big belly in there and goes back and forth and back and forth to make that hollowed out cup. But birds make all types of different nests. Some make a little basket that hangs in a tree. Some will actually dig a hole in a tree and lay it in what we call a cavity. So birds build nests. But nests aren't places that birds live. Birds only use nests for the amount of time that they have eggs that need to hatch. So a nest is really kind of just a temporary spot for a bird to lay its eggs, to get its family started, and within about 60 days, it's going to be completely done using that nest. So birds don't really live in nests like a house, like you and I do. They actually just use it to raise their babies. Birds just live out in the world. That's pretty cool. So I don't have feathers, I don't lay eggs, and I don't live in a nest, or even build a nest. Another reason why I am not a bird is my feet. I'm wearing shoes right now. Have you ever seen a bird wearing shoes? I've never seen a bird wearing shoes. And the reason why is because a bird doesn't need to protect his feet. He needs to use his feet to get to where he eats or to get to where he sleeps at night. So different birds have different types of feet. And if you are a duck, you have a foot with webs between your toes. Why would that be? Why would a duck who's in the water, or a pelican who's in the water, have webs between their toes? If you said it's because they swim, you're right. Ducks have to swim out in the middle of the pond to get to where their food is. They eat plants out of the water. So unless they can get out in the water, they can't get to their food. And it also helps them swim away really quickly from a predator if there is one nearby. Another type of bird foot you've probably noticed or seen is a hawk or an eagle foot or an owl or a falcon. They all have these big strong toes with sharp talons on the end. That's a word that means their toenails, their talons. And their feet are really strong because they don't grab their food with their beaks. They grab their food with their feet. They swoop down onto the animal they're going to eat and grab it really tight and fly off to a place where they can eat it. So their feet are actually for hunting. Another type of foot is this from this great blue heron. Now a great blue heron is something we call a shore bird because it walks along the shore of a lake or a pond or even a river sometimes. And they have really long, long legs and really long, long toes that are spread out so that when they walk in the mud, their feet don't sink and get stuck. Have you ever stepped in the mud and your shoe gets stuck and you pull your foot out and your shoe is still stuck in the mud? That can't happen to a heron. He doesn't want to get caught in the mud. So he needs to be able to walk on top. So this toe helps spread his weight out and helps him walk on top. So you'll notice that some of these other birds have the type of feet that we usually think of as bird feet. These are all called perching birds. This quail has long toes because he runs on the ground. This robin has shorter toes and they're kind of all the same, they kind of all go the same direction so that he can actually grip onto a branch and perch at night. But this woodpecker has a little bit different foot as you can tell. He has two toes in front, he has two toes in back so that he can crawl up the side of a tree and not slide back down. So he can go frontwards, he can turn around, he can even go down head first, but having two toes in front and two toes in back help him do that. So I don't have feathers, and I don't have eggs, and I don't live in a nest, and I don't have feet like that, and I also don't have a beak. So I don't have a beak. I have a nose, and I have a mouth, just like you do. And I also have teeth. Have you ever seen a bird with teeth? Birds don't have teeth. Teeth are bones and they're heavy bones and they weigh too much. So birds don't have any teeth in their mouths, but their mouths are all different shapes because they are tools for eating just like their feet. They have different shapes because they eat different food. 
If you are a bird like a hawk, an eagle, an owl, a falcon, an osprey, one of those birds that we call a raptor because it grabs its food with its feet, you're going to have a beak like this. It's going to be kind of a hook-shaped beak, and it's really, really sharp. And this is so that when the bird takes its feet and grabs its prey, it uses its beak like a little steak knife and cuts off little bite-sized pieces so that he can swallow them because he doesn't have any teeth. So he has to be able to swallow what he's eating. Another type of beak that you might see on a bird is from that great blue heron that I told you about. Look at this long, skinny beak. A long, skinny beak does a couple of things. It allows the bird to go kind of deep into the mud and pluck out its food. In this case, it's kind of like this pair of chopsticks and it pulls out this little frog Obviously, I'm not really good at that. It, this little frog, and it pulls him out of the mud so the bird can swallow it whole. And this heron will do that. It'll do that with fish as well. And because its beak is nice and long and skinny, it keeps the bird from getting a whole face full of mud. I don't think you'd want to stick your face in the mud to eat either, and neither does a bird. Another type of beak that a bird might have might be like a duck. See this duck? We call that a bill. And it's kind of a spoon-shaped beak. But what's interesting about a duck's bill is that underneath, on the top and on the bottom, there are little ridges that kind of fit together like this. So that when they fit together, and when this bird takes a bite of, of water, because that's basically what it does, it scoops up water with its mouth, and the water drains out through the holes between the ridges on its beak, and it ends up keeping all of the plants. So this is kind of like allowing them to eat their food without getting a belly full of water. It's kind of the reason why your mom takes your Coke away at the restaurant and doesn't let you drink all that before you eat. You need to get some food in there before you get it full of liquid so that you don't feel full and then get hungry later. Another kind of beak that you might see on a bird is something we see on sparrows and finches and all these little, these little brown birds that come into our yards a lot. And they actually have, they look like little tiny birds and little tiny beasts, but they're actually really strong like this pair of pliers. And what they do is they will pick up a seed with this pair of pliers or this plier-like beak and they'll crunch it really hard and it opens that seed up so that they can get what's inside. So these are kind of like a little nutcracker. It's like a little pair of pliers. Another type of beak um, you'll find on this woodpecker. Remember the one who climbs up the tree like this? Well, while he's climbing up the tree like this, he's actually looking in the, between the little rows of bark in the ridges and trying to find bugs. And what he'll do is when he pecks at that tree, he'll make a little hole and he'll stick his beak down inside that hole and his tongue will go in with his beak and help him pull out little insects so that he can swallow them. And his tongue is really cool. His tongue goes and wraps all the way around his brain, which is what protects his head when he drums on the tree trying to attract a mate. His tongue goes out after he picks up, picks, pecks the hole, and then he grabs that bug out of the bark. Isn't that crazy? I'm glad I don't have to eat like that. So all these cool things we've been talking about, about birds, beaks, feathers, nests, eggs, these are things that we call an adaptation. And an adaptation is something an animal has or does to help it survive in its environment. And it makes them uniquely qualified to do that. So once we have actually figured out what makes a bird a bird and we like to go out and look at them, that's actually the most fun is to go out and look for birds. But let's listen just for a second. not right now. Maybe there'll be one that'll call to us in a few minutes. One of the ways you can identify a bird is just learning what it sounds like. And that takes a lot of practice, but there are a lot of people who do that. Another way to identify a bird or to know what you're looking at is to use what we call a field guide. Now, a field guide can be all kinds of things. It can be a book that has many, many birds in it. It can be a book of all the birds in the United States. We have a field guide that you can actually download off of the teacher resource area of the Ogden Nature Center website. And this is one that we made up to help people find birds right here in our city. And this is called a field guide because what it has in here, it's arranged by where you might see certain birds. It has their photograph and it has their name and how to identify them. So we have birds that you might find in parks or cemeteries that have a lot of really big old growth trees. You might see woodpeckers in there. You might see a cooper's hawk because he eats birds. 
we have things um, where you have birds near ponds and lakes and rivers. So these are birds that you might see out here, even out here at the Nature Center on Teal Pond. Behind me this morning, I've already seen this Canada goose and this mallard duck. There are birds you might see in driveways and parking lots. So if your mom goes to the store and you have to sit in the car and wait, this is actually a really good thing to do. Look at the birds that are sitting on the light posts or walking around the dumpsters or walking around the restaurant parking lots. You will see birds like this. On the back of our guide, we also have birds that you might have come to your backyard. Depending on what you have in the yard or, or the vegetation around your home, you might get some of these types of birds. These are also birds that if you go on the internet, you can figure out what kind of seed do I need to put out to have these birds come see me. Things like, like the house finch with his red belly or the American robin, which everybody knows what a robin looks like. On the very last page, you're going to see the birds that sit on top of power poles. It sounds kind of crazy, doesn't it? But birds like hawks and our little kestrel here, a little falcon, they actually like to sit on big power lines and power poles out in open areas along highways because there's usually a lot of farm fields there, which means there's a lot of mice and rabbits, which means they have a lot of good things to eat. So those are the kinds of animals, the uh, birds you would look for as you're going along the highway. You don't have to have a pair of binoculars. I have my binoculars right here. You don't need binoculars to look at birds. You just have to be quiet and still. But if you do have a pair of binoculars at home and you want to know how to use them, it's kind of hard to find a bird. And what you need to do is you need to actually find that bird with your eyes first. So you need to focus on the bird, and I'm going to focus up here on a spot on a tree, and I'm not going to take my eyes off the spot on that tree, and I'm going to bring my binoculars up, and I'm going to put them in the way just like this. And then on top of your binoculars, there might be a little dial that helps you focus them. If when you bring your binoculars up, you're looking through two circles, you need to move them in or out until you're looking through one circle. And then focus again. But don't take your eyes off your bird. Keep looking at him. I hope you enjoy coming out with me to talk about birds and to learn about birds and to look for birds. Let's look at Teal Pond just for a second and see if we see any birds out there swimming by. I guess not right now. Well, better luck next time. It's, it takes a little bit of time to look for birds. It's kind of a fun thing to do. You could actually just sit on your porch and watch and wait for them to come in. Once they're used to you being there, you probably will see a whole lot. I'm Susan. I appreciate you coming out to the Ogden Nature Center with me today virtually. And come back when we can. Thank you.